We are now starting today's journey in our second STEM innovation contest again. Today, we'll be dedicated to national teams, which means that the, the teams conform with nationals in the same team. We have people coming from SUT, Chilean University of Technology, also from the University of Petrosani, from Midweida in Germany, and uh, also from SUT. From SUT, we have two teams, okay? The first one will be Abdik, uh, Michal and Agnieszka are going to present. Please come here. Thank you. They are going to present a project on the challenge number four, bicycle safety and security. A warm welcome to them. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to be here. We are Avgix, a team from Saidizian University of Technology from Poland. Um, today, we would like to contribute to that wonderful event a little bit and present our idea for challenge number four, which concerns bicycle safety. On this slide, you can see challenges description. In Poland, in 2022, the number of challenges involving bicycle was 3,685, and that number can be even bigger because not all accidents are reported. So we think that the problem is real, therefore a solution is needed. There are many factors uh, increasing popularity of uh, bicycles. Firstly, it is obviously an ecological and cheap mean of transport. The second, uh, it also enables people to um, avoid traffic. Secondly, it is obviously a sport and a fun, friendly family uh, opportunity. On the other hand, we have some discouraging factors as well. As you can see on the research done on the right side on this slide, it is not our research, we just read it. Uh, crash risk is the most discouraging reason for a lot of people, so we decided to eliminate that in our project. We believe that the fundaments of our project were supposed to be safety and eco-friendliness. Only 35% of people in Poland feel safe while cycling on the road, according to CBOS. Um, unprotected traffic participants' safety can be decreased by their poor visibility on the road, but also hurt cyclers can have difficulty calling for help and proving their innocence in an accident is also hard, to say at least. When it comes to environment, we knew since the beginning of our project that we should pay attention to that, so we tried to use eco-friendly materials so that cycling could remain its good reputation. But before we present our solution, I would like to shortly introduce our team. We were guided and supported by Professor Damian Hadris and a PhD student Violetta Sabulska from our university from the Faculty of Transport. When it comes to the three of us, we are all pursuing Bachelor of Engineering in Transport. Miał Sujkowski, present here, <laughs> is the leader of this project. He, is a vocation, he has a vocational diploma in electronic, which was very useful during this project. He is also a chairman of two student science clubs, uh, which, so he has experience in uh, leading uh, no, sorry. <laughs> so he is experienced in leading teamwork. I did my best helping with that as a co-leader. Uh, I also pay attention to systematic approach to task, and beside that, I'm also interested in 3D printing. When it comes to our third member, it's Gaetan Potravek. He has he's experienced in IT field, and his knowledge and expertise were also very useful during this project. There is one thing we all have in common. Uh, we, all three of us, are licensed private pilots, which explains the name of our team, AVIX, or as one may say, Aviation VIX. That's the short for that. So, coming back to the main topic, we would like to present our solution. Because, you know, when someone wants to stay safe when he's riding a bike, he can simply use a bike, right? Nothing special about that. But, I would like to point out the fact that bike does not prevent accidents, neither does it help afterwards. Wearing a regular helmet decreases the severity of injuries up to 74%. But it is only a passive safety, one may say, because as I said, it does not prevent, neither does it help afterwards. 
Our solution would be passive and active because we wanted to create a helmet that would help prevent accidents and even if the accident occurs, it would help the cycler to call for help. Yeah, this is this helmet. I will introduce you all pictures later. Yeah, it will be discussed in greater detail. But just in short for now, uh, it contains of three main features. Emergency signal system. During create that, creating that, we were inspired by ecosystem obligatory used in cars in Europe. It does not prevent <coughs> accidents, but also decreases the severity of them up to 10%. A driving recorder has to do with the fact of proving innocence, with that, which I have mentioned earlier. And additional lightning, uh, light mirror, unprotected traffic participant up to 90% more visible. In comparison, high visibility jacket only improves that to 50%. So it was very useful addition. Okay, when it comes to the process of development, each of our members were assigned a task according to their knowledge and expertise, but at every stage we are cooperating and learning from each other. So, firstly, we created electronic scheme, but before we actually made all the connections, we did it on prototype board to make sure it works as desired, as desired and then we made all the actual connections. Additional lightning and all other features that I've mentioned had to work properly and in harmony with Arduino. For that, we used C++ language because it is advised for Arduino and it is mainly because it is fast and reliable. After that, we needed some extra space to actually implement it into the helmet. Uh, and for that, a 3D design was made in program Fusion 360. And as a filament, we used RPET material, which is made out of recycled materials. After we done all the work, we completed the product and all team members tested that. Okay, and so Agnieszka introduced you to all theoretical part of the, of the process for making a helmet and all theoretical knowledge. Introduce the topic, uh, I will concentrate more on technical part of our solution. Uh, we will start from microcontroller Arduino. Uh, when you are talking about electronics, it's the most important thing, I think, because without uh, and the microcontroller it just cannot work properly. Uh, I think most of you know Arduino, it's really common, uh, common in electronics. It is uh, usually used to prototype all electronics solution. Uh, it's a compact and uh, vestible microcontroller board, uh, which provides a wide range uh, of uh, features and capabilities. Uh, you can connect a lot of sensors from other solutions, you cannot use it to our uh, project. It is uh, easy to assemble, easy to power supply. You can use only one power supply, which is uh, easy voltage, low, low voltage, uh, not uh, difficult to, to achieve. Uh, it's also low cost, which was important for us. Uh, easy to programming and easy to replace a model if something doesn't work properly. Uh, okay, so starting uh, talking about all features. Uh, you know already what functionalities you have but don't know how it's actually work. Uh, so, uh, I will tell you how do we achieve our uh, assumptions. Ecosystem uh, is uh, composed of three, mo uh, three modules, uh, A6, uh, 3A6 accelerometer, impact sensor, and GSM module. Uh, because how it works. Uh, we can activate it by two, two different ways. First is automatic uh, detection, fall detection. Uh, which is activated by firstly impact sensor and uh, together the 380 uh, meter which uh, which detect a load higher than 4G because we know that we have impact and high load it uh, it gives us a message that something bad happened and uh, the biker may be in difficult situation even to call to emergency uh, so the second so uh, option to to activate the ecosystem is manual, uh, also similar as uh, in cars. Uh, if you press and hold the button longer than two seconds, because uh, we want to prevent any accidentally, uh, accidentally activating the uh, we did this two seconds time and two ways uh, to activate the ecosystem. Uh, you can see there 
the bottom of Isoris, it's uh, highly visible and easy to access for biker to just press this and hold to call it ITOS. And the second option, it's obvious. Uh, here's how it actually works. Uh, it, uh, when we already have initiated the emergency call, uh, the GSM module is automatic starting 112 call. Uh, what is the most important thing, but uh, not the only one. Uh, the helmet is also sending SMS to previously set the number, for example, family member, uh, wife, uh, friend, or whoever uh, you want, uh, informing about the dangerous situation. As you can see there, we can input the name of the you of this uh, of this person, and just to have a message: I need help. Okay, you know about uh, ecosystem, and another really <coughs> important uh, solution in our in our helmet is lightning system. Uh, it consists of uh, three di three different uh, types of lightning. But firstly, which models we have? Again, 3A6 accelerometer, the same one, but also light sensor and model of wireless communication. Uh, firstly, you have a brake light. Brake light uh, works uh, with 3A6 accelerometer uh, and it detects uh, the deaccelerate more than 2G. It's, uh, it's just uh, a message that it's uh, rapidly decreasing a speed and we know it is, uh, it is uh, braking. Yeah? Uh, okay. Other lightning system is just after dark, dark lightning. It automatically uh, is activated automatically when the uh, uh, when the light sensor detects lower amount of uh, of sound or just uh, just light than it is previously set by user. User can set amount of light which is for him comfortable to be without without light. And after this uh, this uh, this uh, this amount the lighting system is automatically turned on. And the last one is uh, our turn signals, which are uh, controlled by, by the biker, uh, by the switch, which is mounted on the handbar. You can uh, put it just on the handlebar. It's easy, so you can uh, put it everywhere and just control the, the lighting. Uh, after the dark lighting, it's a blinking light, because uh, as we saw in the research, uh, blinking light is 20% uh, better visible than a constant light. That's why we use a uh, blinking light. Uh, you can see there how it looks like. But I want to show you on the real helmet how it actually works. You have a switch here, on-off switch. So if you want to uh, turn on the helmet, just do it. Uh, we hear the voice. The camera recorder is automatically on. So we record all, all what uh, happens before the biker. Uh, here's this SOS button which I told you before, and here's the light sensor. If I put the finger here, you know it's a dark here, yeah? So we see the lightning here and lightning in the front. It's automatically turning on and it's dark, yeah? I, I uh, hit the light sensor and it's dark for the, for the helmet, yeah? If you understand it uh, for sure. Uh, of course, we do not want to call the emergency now. That's why we set for the presentation it's a bit button as a simulating the braking uh, braking situation. Just to show you how it's work because I cannot uh, do a braking without a uh, without a bike and a lot of space. Yeah. So I, I put the put this button now, and you see this is a braking signal. And it's, of course we are not braking now. Yeah. It's, I simulated by this uh, by this uh, by this switch to show you that. Uh, okay uh, and. Uh, Two signals, of course. You have it here, left one and right one. And I put the left switch. We have uh, uh, th this side, and the second is working like that. that that's what I w w wanted to show you. Uh, okay. Uh, so after that, I want to show you what are the most important advantages of our solution which are better than normal helmet. We make use of uh, a lot of devices which have never been used in bicycle industry. I mean for, uh, for sure ecosystem and video recorder which have never been used in helmets. Uh, ecosystem is known and we all know that it's important but in cars, not in bikes. We want to implement it to this, uh, to this uh, industry.
We combined also a few solutions in one smaller and lighter solution than each, uh, each used uh, separately. Use only one power supply, you have all features in one, one thing, so it's lighter and smaller than all features separately. Uh, what else? Uh, it is the universal solution to everyone. It doesn't require any other, uh, other devices such as smartphone, internet connections, or difficult uh, connections or something. It can be used not only in one particular bike, we can use it wherever we want. For example, also uh, electric scooter or roller blades. Uh, it is not only for bicycle. It's previously made for bicycle, but not only. And uh, for the, to the finish of the presentation, I want to also show you show to you that these brake signals are wa working properly during the riding a bike. Okay, I need to turn off the laser. Here you saw, uh, see a bicycle, uh, and now he's braking, as you saw. Okay, uh, to, to summarize, uh, I want to so, uh, tell you one more thing, uh, because we know our solution can be improved. It is not perfect. Uh, but as you also know, our device uh, needed to be in short time. We have only a few, few months to make it, from zero to the... Uh, already made helmet. Uh, so we didn't uh, add, we didn't implement all features which we wanted. So in the next generation we want, to, we want to, to implement a few other solutions such as we want to implement a GPS model to for example send a precision location for, uh, with SMS where we actually are. But we couldn't do it in this, uh, this uh, prototype because it was too difficult to us in this short time. Uh, we also can minimize the helmet size and weight as well. Uh, it, it was only prototype. Yeah, we can smaller, smaller it, and uh, for example, don't use Arduino, just smaller parts, etc. It is easy to do, but not in such small time. That is also uh, more expensive to prototype, of course. Uh, there is also no problem to enabling the user option of Bluetooth connection, for example, and using this microphone and speaker which you have. And for example, made uh, call, calls from the from the helmet or listening to the music, for example. Mm, okay, uh, thank you so much for listening to us. I hope you enjoyed our presentation and you like it. Thank you so much. Hi, <laughs> Duncan here. <laughs> yeah, it's the, this is the first member of our team, of course, the informatic who to, to programs our helmet. Thank you very much for, for your presentation, it's very interesting. Now Professor Nabil Asadi is going to make his question. Thank you. Feel free. <laughs> yes, I have a question, a simple question. Can you explain any innovative uh, or aspects, aspects of your solution that see it apart from existing bicycle safety and security systems? <laughs> Could you rephrase that, please? Okay. Can you explain mm -hmm. any innovative or aspects of your solution that set it apart from existing bicycle safety and security system? Yeah, as, as we told you, that the all feature ecosystem, for example, or other, all other solutions are implemented uh, after after we had a normal helmet, regular helmet, or lightning system, etc. There are th th this. Features are existing, but not all together in one solution and uh, in the health as ecosystem. It's used, of course, but in cars, not in, in bicycles. So it's innovative in case of bicycle industry. Not uh, not in general, but all all together is innovative solution, not separately, but all together in this exact situation, it is uh, innovative. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Now, the other? Now, Angela is Angela Tawada, who is uh, replacing <laughs> our previous professor, is going to ask you the next question. Thank you. Um, I have several questions. But oh, if I have okay. to choose one, uh, it's about the economy. So, how much does it cost to produce? Okay.
Okay, I will show you something, okay? I believe we have the documentation here, so... Yeah, uh, we, uh, we ha had to buy any, any you know, devices, etc. Materials, so wait a moment, I will show you that. Uh, it's of course a draft, our draft of, uh, of costs, but uh, it's of, of a prototype. As you can see, uh, we use a prototyping material and uh, for, for the finished one, uh, the better material to, to create our solution. Uh, it was about 100 uh, euros and all the other solutions together gives us about 500 euro in prototype. So it was more expensive. Sorry? It can be reduced later. Yeah, it can be yeah. reduced, uh, I think, about a half to the finished finish product, but it was more, more expensive to make a prototype. So we estimate that final cost of the product can be about uh, 550 euros. 200. 200, 200, yes, of course, 250 euros, <coughs> about. Thank you very much. Because it includes a helmet, camera recorder, yeah, and a few other solutions, so it cannot be cheaper, really. But we think that this cost for the safety is really need, worth to give. Worth to, worth to <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Professor Panagotis. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have a helmet, please? No, no, I just want to see the weight. So, yeah, not, not this one, it's, more, uh, it's, uh, it's heavy. No, it's not very heavy. It's not, it's not very heavy. Uh, for example, if you can take a, a helmet to, for example, uh, motor, motorcycles, yeah. there are, the, the rave is higher, even this, than this solution. Uh, of okay. course, it is not more heavy than it will be in final product. Yeah, yeah but I didn't do my question, so oh, <laughs> don't okay. worry. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, if you tamper it with a helmet, you destroy its static integrity. Yeah. If you put bolts in there, if you cut places or whatever, then you tamper with the integrity and safety of the helmet itself. Why not put some of these uh, sensors, integrate them in the bicycle itself, so that you keep the integrity of the helmet? To make it easy to take everywhere, not only in one particular bike. Okay. It is not only for using only one particular bicycle. You can take it and use it everywhere you want. So you have mm. all together, you can take it wherever you want. So, so there are... What we, we think about uh, a uh, solution with improving that, that we can make it separately and just putting it on the helmet, mm. not, uh, not making it together. Is the other, uh, is the other idea? But yeah. make this one. And as you see, of course, for example, lightning system is exactly on the helmet, not here. It's on the helmet, yeah? So it was easier to make everything here. Mm -hmm. So the answer of the first one is if there are more, more people that ride a bicycle or more bicycles than people. So it depends which is more than you put the, uh, the sensors <laughs> in the least populated um, I think okay. so. uh, thank you very much now I have my question uh, it's, um, it's just that have you ever considered professional cyclists how this could affect their driving it would definitely have to be more aerodynamic as you know. yeah yeah uh, a lighter for sure, but that's you know further plan as we mentioned. It's Pro not perfect, and we know it, but there professional are professional cyclists don't need every solutions, which mm -hmm. are in this solution. For example, they have only, for example, brake signals. Probably they won't need a video recorders, yeah, or or ecosystem. Probably they are riding with other people, and for example, the lightning system will be enough uh, for them. So it will it would be really really smaller. Even for policemen, I've seen them in bikes sometimes. <laughs> no, no, I've seen them using bikes, and the recorder could be useful for them. Yeah. Yeah. It just depends. We can, who also, we can also put here not normal video recorder. We can put, it, for example, a GoPro camera. And yeah. for people who are hiding bike in mountains, for example, mm. they can use this, this bike and have already camera, mm. sport camera, uh, already on the helmet. 
Okay, so thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs>